All right, perfect time. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. This is How to Foster Team Success. Uh, I know DrupalCon is usually a conference where it's more tech focused, uh, so you guys are gonna learn a lot more than other people normally would. They're gonna miss all this, because they're more for the tech, and this is more for what goes behind the tech, which is the team that builds the projects, so everyone can benefit. Uh, before we get started, just a little bit about myself. My name is Mike Miles. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I've been working with Drupal for almost a decade now, since 2008, uh, so it's been a while. Uh, I am the lead organizer for the Boston Drupal Meetup. Um, I give sessions at conferences. I am lucky enough to have been published in the last Drupal Watchdog magazine, which is I was really excited about. Um, and I have done everything under the sun when it comes to Drupal, and I've worked on many teams building Drupal projects. So from just doing basic content entry all the way up to what I do most of the day, which is large scale Drupal architecture. And I do that in my day job at Genuine, who's a full ser service digital agency. So we're not a Drupal shop, which means we do a whole lot more than just development. Uh, we have a video team, who does digital and traditional video, SEO, strategy teams, UX teams, a design team, experiential team, uh, who build like digital applications and touchscreen stuff. Uh, if you visited the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion booth and had your photo taken, that's our app that's taken that photo. Uh, it is powered by Drupal on the back end, actually. Um, and in terms of development, we have three main dev teams. We have our .NET team, who focuses on Sitecore and EpiServer. Our uh, front end team, who does like Node stuff and JavaScript and CSS and all that uh, front, front end stuff. And then the PHP team, which 99% of the time we are the Drupal team. So at Genuine, we have a lot of experience working with teams uh, in, in fostering a team environment. Now, I also am one of the hosts of the Developing Up podcast. If you haven't heard of it, it is a podcast focused on the non-technical side of being a developer. Uh, so things like working on a team or setting professional goals. Uh, if you want to, check it out. It's really cool. I think so. Uh, if you want to know any more about me, I'm not going to spend the whole session talking about myself. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet, MikeMiles86, from Twitter to Drupal. Uh, to Google Plus if anyone ever uses that. I don't think anybody does. I don't know why I ever mention it, but I do. So how to foster team success. When coming up with this session, it was revealed to me really quickly from my team who I uh, collaborated with on this, uh, that success means many different things to many different people. All right, we all here work on different teams. We all have different goals that we're trying to reach on our teams, whether it's delivering a product to a client it's building an internal product. Uh, most likely, it's something to do with Drupal, I assume, since you're at DrupalCon. But what we try to do individually as teams is very different. But how we define success, I believe, is very universal. So in the scope of this talk, for what determines a successful teams, I have three metrics. The first is that a successful team is one that delivers value, whether that is business value, product value, internal value. It's a team of people who can continually deliver their goals, whatever their goals might be. Successful teams are those that can manage time. They can figure out priorities, schedule their tasks as need be, and reach uh, deadlines. Right? Without that, a team cannot be successful. And finally, a successful team is one that can maximize the skill sets of every member of that team. So for the scope of this talk, <laughs> A successful team is one that can best utilize everyone who makes up the team, one that can manage the time effectively to reach uh, endpoints and deadlines, and a team that delivers uh, value on whatever goals they're trying to reach. Now, successful teams are made up of effective team members. And for the scope of this talk, what I mean by effective team members are people on a team who embody four traits. They foster them within themselves uh, and encourage others uh, to foster them. These traits are communication. Effective team members are able to talk with each other and talk to people outside of the team and share messaging and goals and align. Effective team members can collaborate. They foster a sense of collaboration. They know how to work with other people, how to share responsibilities, and, and uh, how to share responsibilities. They foster positive positivity and a positive mindset. This is not that they ignore any problems the team may run into, but they almost foster a can-do attitude that they know they can overcome. 
And finally, effective team members foster responsibility. They hold the success of the team on their shoulders. They embody the sense of not the team doesn't succeed, the, every single person on the team succeeds. One person doesn't fail, the whole team fails. So I have a question for everybody here. This, there's a little bit of um, audience participation today. Who here wants their team to be successful? All right, all right, that's a trick question, right? Everyone should raise their hand or else you should go to another talk. Who here wants to change people on their team to be more successful? All right, call, not as many hands. And, and that's good because wanting to change people is, a, is problematic. And the problem is you cannot force change on others. No matter where your current team or teams you've been on is struggling, you cannot expect to learn something from me today, which I hope you do, and then try to implement that on others. People will only change when they want to, not when they're forced to. But what you can do is inspire change in other people. You can demonstrate the value of being an effective team member. You can demonstrate what it takes for a team to be successful. And you can inspire others on your team to do the same. Why is my clicker going? Great. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go over today, is those four traits that make up effective team members, communication, collaboration, positivity, and responsibility. I'm not going to tell you how you can do these and how you can implement these and expect other people to, to become more successful, but I'm going to give you ideas on how, within yourselves, you can foster these traits and demonstrate them to your team to drive your team to success of maximizing skill sets, managing time, and delivering value. So for each one of these traits, what I'm going to go through for the rest of the session is I'm going to give you a demonstration, or I'm going to talk about the importance of this trait. I'm going to give you an example of a team that demonstrates this trait and how it helps lead to their success. And then give you a few ideas of what you could do to demonstrate these traits to your team and hopefully inspire you to carry these past DrupalCon back when you go back to work to produce better work and deliver more value. So communication, the first trait. Communication is key to a team being successful. Without communication, people don't necessarily know what they're working towards. Everyone's going to have their own idea of what the team's values are, what the goals are. You're never going to be sure if everyone's on the quote unquote the same page and are working towards the same value. Having clear and open communication allows team members to lower barriers between each other. If people can communicate effectively, they can raise their hand and offer solutions, but also ask for help. Having clear communication prevents wasted time on miscommunication, which is time that your team could be using to deliver value and, and build the products they need to. Now, a unique team um, that I think exemplifies communication are flight crews. And what's unique about flight crews is that within a given day, you know, they have to interface with hundreds of clients, you know, the passengers. When there's great communication, it goes very well. You know, people have a pleasant flight. We've seen in the last couple of weeks when there's bad communication on flight crews, what happens? So it's important that everyone in a, who's part of flight crew can openly communicate with the passengers and with each other to resolve issues, to plan out uh, strategies, and to make sure the flight goes very well. Now, a more unique subset of flight crews are long haul flight crews. So how many people here have ever been on long haul flights? So 10 plus hours. All right, good number of people. It may be interesting for you to know, if you never realized, that on long haul flights for most airlines, that flight crew, they only work together for that one flight. They've never worked together before, and they won't work together again. This is the case for most large airlines, because they have so many people going to so many different destinations. So it's imperative for long haul flight crews that they do not waste time on miscommunication. That even though they're partnering up with people they haven't met before, they can be open and honest about what they expect for the flight, who's going to handle what responsibilities, and how they message issues that come up. So long haul flight crews, what they do is they meet 
two to three hours before a flight. They get together in a room, you know, behind security. They talk about things like the weather for the flight. They talk about uh, where they just came from or where, the, where they're planning to go after they land. But they also discuss what roles, what responsibilities is everyone going to take on? What are, what are you best at in your role? Now, there are some dedicated roles. Obviously, flight attendants aren't going to be like, I want to be the pilot for this flight. That doesn't happen. But what does happen is they discuss, all right, three hours into the flight, we need to do um, dinner service. Who's going to go the front of the, the plane? Who's going to go the back of the plane? Let's figure out who works best. If they weren't able to have that time and build up that communication, then it would just be chaos on a flight. And no one would have a good time. So how do you foster communication, effective communication, on your own team? First thing you do is be an active listener. So there's two types of listening. There's active and passive. Passive listening, you hear what someone says, but you don't process it. You're not paying 100% attention. This is where I expect to see laptops go down if people are <laughs> on their phones. I'm not calling you out. But you, know, you may be distracted uh, taking notes on your laptop. You may be playing on your phone. You may be thinking about what you're going to say to add to the conversation when someone else is speaking. And we've all, we've all done this. We all do this. But when it happens, you miss information that someone's telling you. You miss potentially vital information. And you either ask them to repeat it, or you just act like, oh, yeah, I heard you. OK. That leads to miscommunication and misalignment on the team. Now, when you're an active listener, not only do you hear what someone's saying to you, but you're processing it. You're giving them your full undivided attention. And giving people undivided attention is, these days, coming a real commodity. Right? People were always so distracted uh, on our phones, on our gadgets. We have so many streams of information that it's hard to give someone 100% of your attention. Now, when you're speaking to your team, when you're giving solutions, when you're discussing problems, when you're asking your client, about requirements, you expect them to give you your full attention, don't you? So when someone is speaking to you on your team, you should do the same. You should give them your full attention. You should get all the information you can to understand what they're saying to you. And this, what this allows you to do is then to ask questions, to ask insightful questions. How questions, what question, why questions. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you were saying. What are the requirements we need to build for? I don't understand that. Like, ask those sort of questions. How do you expect me to deliver this feature in, in three hours? It's like a two-week process. I don't understand what you're asking me to do. Asking those questions to prompt people to provide you with more information until everyone is on the same page. I just realized those were two very negative questions to ask, but it's been a long day. Now, when you ask insightful questions, you promote others on your team to start to over-communicate. And you yourself, you want to be the person on your team who over-communicates without having to be prompted with questions. A good uh, example of this has, does anyone work in like Scrum Agile methodology? Has anyone done that? A few people in the room. All right. So with Scrum and Agile, you have daily stand-ups, right? 15-minute quick meetings where you share what you did what you're going to be doing, and where you were stuck. If you work on Agile or not, be the person who provides that information to the rest of your team. Make sure you're letting them know what you've done, what you're going to do, and where you're having trouble. Now, when you start building an atmosphere of over-communication between everyone on the team, when you prompt your team with asking insightful questions and they start asking each other insightful questions, and when everyone starts being an active listener, what you'll see is that your team becomes inspired to start opening up, to listening to each other, to sharing ideas and problems. They lower the barriers between each other and come to a common ground and a common understanding. This allows you to know what values the team is seeking to deliver and how you can move forward, what ideas you can do to maximize people's skill sets. Now, the second attribute is collaboration. Collaboration is important to a team because it's the difference between people working together and people working next to each other. Having an active environment of collaboration reduces wasted time from duplication of efforts. If person A and person B are working on the same thing and they don't realize it, they're going to spend 
extra time solving the same problems. When one person can take half the problems, the other person can take the second half and reduce that wasted time. Collaboration allows team members to share their skill sets to solve problems that are bigger than any one individual could solve, allowing to meet tight deadlines and deliver the values they're expected. Now, a really interesting example of massive team collaboration is the Atlas experiment at the Large Hadron Collider. This is the Atlas device. I wish I had a scale of a person because it's huge. But the Atlas device is one of the, or sorry, the Atlas experiment is one of the four main experiments at CERN. They're testing the standard model. They're trying to understand the fabric of our universe. It's a collaboration of over 3,000 scientific minds working together. As many people are at DrupalCon this week are working on this one project. They represent 38 countries, and they're self-managing, self-organizing. The group, everyone in the group has an equal voice. Everyone in the group raises their hand and says, I know how to work in this expertise for this experiment. I need help building the actual detector. I need help writing the code. Who can help me? The team also has a core tenet that everyone agrees to is that all output from every experiment that is run with this device is shared to the 3,000 people. For a couple of purposes, one, because you know, in science we love everything to be fact-checked, and, and it prevents wasted time from repeating the same experiment besides fact-checking it. So it allows teams to build on top of each other to solve these bigger universal problems. Now I don't have a slide for it, but another team that is massive and really needs strong collaboration is the Drupal community, right? Drupal itself is a large collaborative project. We have many contributors working together trying to solve the same problems, sharing skill sets. We have front-end developers, back-end developers, UX people, you know, all different backgrounds giving different insights and sharing their skills to produce one product that we can all build off of. So everyone building their own CMS, which would be crazy. So how do you foster effective collaboration in your own team? First and foremost, you need to share your knowledge. How many people here have ever heard of the hit by a bus scenario? I right, have a few people, like half the room. So hit by the bus scenario goes like this. Imagine tomorrow you're headed to work and you're hit by a bus. Now after a proper time of grieving, can your team move on without you? Can they pick up where you left off? Or flip it around, what if someone on your team was suddenly gone? What if they were hit by a bus? Can your team effectively move on, continue doing the work in a timely fashion to deliver your results? If the answer to that question is no, then you have a problem with knowledge sharing. Now I can admit as a developer, I run in it, into this myself, where it can be hard in development to separate yourself from your code, to want to hold on to your piece of the puzzle and own it, not let anyone share it. But it's important to share knowledge so that the team can work as effectively as possible. So that when you think you have a solution, someone else can offer uh, maybe point a hole in it that you didn't realize. Or they could offer a, a more elegant solution. Or they could just raise an issue that you didn't see. And they could offer to help you. Because when you share knowledge, what you're doing is, present, is creating opportunities for people to work together. You're giving your team who can who are communicating well with each other, to raise their hands and say, you know what, I know about uh, e-commerce from my last job. Can I help build the, the cart checkout system? I know how to write a grant proposal, because I've done it before. Let me help you uh, write this one. And when you create opportunities, most of them come from offering and asking for help. So when you see someone on your team, let's say you're doing the agile stand-up again, and someone says, I'm stuck on this problem, be the first one to say, hey, I've seen you have been stuck on this for three days. Can I just sit down and help you? Can I just listen to the problem? You want to talk it out with me? Maybe you'll be able to help them. Maybe you'll know the answer. Maybe you won't. But you can work on it together, and you know, two minds are better than one. And demonstrate to your team that it's OK to ask for help to foster collaboration. Be the first one 
to say, I am stuck on this. I don't know how to solve this problem. I'm reaching this deadline. I don't think I can do it on my own. Who can help me? You show your team that it's OK to ask for help, that it's OK to collaborate to you, with each other, that no one needs to just own one piece to feel valuable on a team. When you offer and ask for help, when you create those opportunities for sharing, is opportunity spelled correctly? I'm just noticing if it's, yeah, all right. Man, it wasn't before, and I was worried it was an old version. When you create opportunities, and then when you share knowledge, when you foster that in your team, and you build this environment of collaboration, what you're going to see is your team members are going to start to share ideas and not work next to each other, but work, along, but work with each other. They're going to solve problems bigger than any one person on the team can solve. Positivity. Now, again, when I was coming up with this presentation, uh, I ran it through with my own team because I want to get their collaborative input. And someone on my team raised their hand and said, well, negativity is not a bad thing. Negativity is a good thing. I don't think you should just talk about positivity. And I agree with that person. Neg negativity is a positive driver on a team. So when I talk about positivity here, I'm not talking about ignoring bad things, ignoring the negatives, but having a positive mindset that no matter what challenges your team faces, you can overcome them. No matter what setbacks, you can overcome them, work together, and figure out a solution. Having a positive mindset on a team reaffirms the team's confidence in each other and their ability to do great work and build amazing things. And a positive mindset keeps the team focused on the goals that the team is trying to reach. Instead of being stuck on their setbacks, instead of just focusing all their energy on where they can't move forward. Now, one of the best examples I could think of of a team that demonstrates positivity was the 1985 movie, The Goonies. How many people here have seen The Goonies? All right, almost everybody, not everybody. I'm sorry, it's over 30 years old, so I don't feel like I have to say spoiler alert. <laughs> but The Goonies is a movie about a group of kids who are trying to save their homes from foreclosure. Now like any Disney kids' movies, of course, the best way to do that is to follow a pirate map to a buried treasure, right? How else would you save your home? So these group of kids, against all odds, they have their treasure map. They go hunting for this pirate treasure. They're being chased by murderous bandits. They're in a cave below their town that is full of booby traps set by pirates. But no matter what obstacle they face, they have a phrase that they use, which is, Goonies never say die. They know that no matter what they do together, they can overcome any challenge. A great example of this is a scene in the movie, and this is where the no spoiler alert alerts come into play, where they're in a chamber in the cave, in this cave system, and there is a pipe organ made out of skeleton bones where they have to play the right notes to escape. If they play the wrong notes, the floor is going to fall away, and they'll fall to an abysmal death. Uh, Man, I forget her name. The character in the yellow, she's like, oh, I once took piano lessons. I think I can do this. Andy. What was it? Andy. Andy? Yeah. Thank you very much. I don't know how you, where'd you pull that from, but I've good job. Too many times. All right. <laughs> I don't think there's too, many, too much as seeing it too many times. It's a great movie. Anyways, so Andy plays the right note. You see the door open a little bit. Plays the wrong note. Floor falls away. Freaky. Plays the right note. Door opens a little bit more. Plays another wrong note. The second third of the floor falls away. At this point, she's doubting herself. Because she knows if she hits one more wrong note, the team, all these kids are going to die. She's going to perish. So one of the team members comes up to her and says, hey, you made a mistake. It's OK. Goonies make mistakes. Don't make any more. <laughs> but, but we believe that you can, can do this. And sure enough, she plays the right note. They escape. They eventually find the pirate treasure. Some, you know, some crazy antics ensue with the bandits. But they escape, and they save their homes. Extreme positivity from this crazy group of kids. And that's what you want to foster in your team. You want to foster a Goonies don't never say die attitude. To do this, you want to highlight accomplishments in the team. It's easy for us as humans to remember negative impacts in our life. I'm sure if I asked you right now, you could think of some embarrassing situation you're in or a place where you made a mistake. It's very easy and quick for us to do that. It's harder for us to remember 
places where we've triumphed, accomplishments we've made. So when you can, remind your team about all the successes they've had to get up to the point where they were or where they are. You know, team, I know the client is changing our requirements for the third time, but we've been able to meet all the requirements so far. I know we can do it again. I know we can figure out a way to fit this into the timeline. What you start to do is you start to foster a can-do attitude. Your team believes that they can do anything, that together they can accomplish these tasks. That they don't focus on, we made another mistake, we missed a deadline. You know, we're not good, we can't do this. Instead they'd be like, we made a mistake, but that's okay. The next one, it's, we're gonna learn from it and we're gonna work better. When the team has a can-do attitude, they start to trust within the team. They start to trust each other. Let me ask you, how many people here want to be the person on their team who is mistrusted and not given any responsibilities? Yeah, no hands go up, I expected that. No one on a team wants to be that mistrustful person. Everyone on a team is there to deliver value, to try to do their best to make the team succeed. No matter how misaligned they may be with the team goals or what the team's working towards, everyone there is trying to contribute. And you want to foster that. You want to show the team that you trust them. Be like, team, I know you can handle these responsibilities. I've seen you do it before in previous projects. I know you can, can do it. Because when you put your trust in the team and show them that you trust them, just as you expect them to trust you, when you foster a can-do attitude and when you highlight their previous accomplish accomplishments to remind them of how much they've overcome to get to where they are, you start seeing your team members facing challenges as opportunities and not as obstacles. Anytime there's a setback, anytime there's a change, anytime there's a new requirement, they're like, yeah, we can do this. It's another problem for us to solve. Let's work together. Let's do it. This is awesome. It's never, ugh, we have to do more work. Ugh, we have to solve another challenge. It starts to become a more positive experience. And finally, the fourth, fourth trait, responsibility. Promoting responsibility in a team drives them to success because it fosters within every individual member the goals the team is trying to reach, not their own personal individual goals, which are important. I'm not saying that they're not, but in the aspects of a team, whether you're working on a project, uh, whether you're building your own product, uh, whether it's not even a professional team, maybe working with your significant other on, I don't know, building an herb garden. Um, having everyone have a sense of being responsible for the team, making it, in, uh, delivering those values and being successful in the goals is what drives a team to success. It affirms that every single person on the team matters, that they all play an important point, uh, sorry, important part on the team. Now, uh, an excellent example of this, of responsibility and fostering it within every single member of a team is the Red Bull F1, slot, uh, F1 racing pit crew. This pit crew has been recorded at getting a race car through a pit stop in under two seconds. An unbelievable feat. There's a video of it, it is crazy. Like they do over a dozen things in less than two seconds. The only reason this works, the only reason they can be the best and do this the quickest, is because every single person on that team knows that their individual job matters and delivers the team to be successful. That without them, whether they're holding the spare tire, taking off the lug nuts, uh, washing the window, I don't know what pit crews do for every job. Oh, there's no windows there. Uh, filling the gas tank, lifting the car, whatever their little job is, it's imperative that they do it and they do it as best as they can for the team to succeed. They know that team success is driven by individual success. So in your own team, how can you foster responsibility? First thing you can do is demonstrate and adopt an ownership mi mindset. This is not the team I am working on, this is my team. This is the team I am a part of. The success of this team is driven by my success. If I don't do well, they're not going to do well. If you demonstrate that mindset to your teammates, they're gonna adopt it themselves they're gonna to start to foster it within themselves and take ownership 
of the work that they're, or their task that they're set up to do. This is important because it starts building accountability and you want to demonstrate accountability, not only for the roles and responsibilities you take on, but going back to communication and collaboration, being accountable for the mistakes that you make. If you make a mistake, be the first one to call it out. Be the first one to say, this is my fault that we missed this deadline. I just, things came up and I was not able to complete my task. I apologize. Uh, let's figure out a way to get through it. Don't wait to be accused of um, mis making a mistake. Be the first one to call it out because that shows your team that it's okay to make mistakes, that everyone's human, that we make mistakes and together as a team, you can work through it to be successful, that everyone's going to work together to overcome. And finally, to foster responsibility, you need to share and promote success. If you are a team leader, if you are a manager, do not be the person who sucks all the success and keeps the spotlight on themselves. If someone on your team does an important part of the work, whatever you're doing, building a project, make sure they're recognized for it. If you're giving a client demo and the functionality that you're demonstrating to the client is due to one person on your team, maybe it's the junior member on your team, give them credit. Say, hey, this was Alex's role. Alex did this part. It's thanks to them that you're seeing this awesome functionality in time. Better yet, give them chances, chances to own the spotlight. Highlight their accomplishments. Tell your whole company, shout it from the rooftops. Do whatever you can to promote the success of the individuals. That's gonna build up their confidence in, within themselves. It's gonna make them feel important on the team, like they played a key role. And then it's gonna drive them to wanna to do better and help the team succeed. When you promote success, when you demonstrate accountability, and when you adopt an ownership mindset, what you inspire in your team is the thought that team success becomes individual success. That if the team does well, each person on that team will do well. That an individual can't do well unless the whole team does. There's no such thing as saying, well, I did my part okay. The team will still fail unless everyone does okay. The team starts getting away from, well, that's not my job mentality. They seek out ways to help where there are gaps, where there are missing pieces. Now those are the four traits, communication, collaboration, positivity, and responsibility. But I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about distractors. No matter what you try to do, there always seems to be, in my experience, those people on the team who focus on the negatives, who constantly battle with everyone on the team, who have negative things to say, who are just, you know what, they're misaligned on what the team goals are. They seem that they're trying to um, sabotage the team at every turn. Now this could be internally within the members of your team, uh, maybe fighting for power, or who knows what. This could be externally with a bigger team, even say your client. It could seem like to your developers that the client is constantly trying to sabotage the work they're doing. Distractors happen, and I believe they happen from not fostering these four traits of communication, collaboration, positivity, and responsibility. So how can you, how can you mitigate distractors? Weird, all right. To overcome team distractors, just use some of the values that I've been talking about so far. If someone sees like they're just constantly pointing out holes or pointing out issues, Communicate with them and ask insightful questions. Alex, why, why do you think that you know, we can't um, meet these requirements? What do you think is getting in the way? Let, help me understand what you, do, what you think is blocking us. How would you solve this problem? How would you have the team work on it? You know, encourage their involvement with the team. Have that distractor remit remind them that they are part of the team, that they are driving the team to be successful, that they are an integral part of the team. Remind them of, again, team accomplishments. Set that positive mindset. That the team has overcome challenges in the past, they can do it again. Here's examples of where they succeeded. I know you know all the examples of where we failed before, but here's where we did well. 
and foster within them, most importantly, again, team ownership, that they are an integral part of the team. That they need, that you want that distractor to be successful in helping the team to be successful. So within your own team, you can focus, uh, you can foster success by fostering and focusing within yourself effective communication, collaboration, positivity, and responsibility. How many people here feel like they could work on one of these four to inspire others on their team to be more effective and drive towards success? Okay, a couple people. All right, just about everybody. That's awesome. And here's, here's what's really important about inspiration and not forcing change in people but demonstrating the value of change is that inspiration snowballs. So as you demonstrate each one of these values, as you demonstrate how it leads your team to be successful, you inspire just one person on your team. Now there's two of you. The two of you inspire another person on your team. Now there's three of you. Before you know it, your whole company is inspired to do better. Your whole organization is inspired to do better. The whole Drupal community is inspired to do better. But it takes it within ourselves to inspire ourselves and work on it ourselves, because we're the only people we can change. So I hope with this talk that I haven't changed you, but I've inspired you to do better, to try to drive towards more success on your team and foster these traits. Now I have some resources for you guys. I'll read these off. I'll get off this slide and I'll put it back up. That's how I do things, it's weird. Um, but I have this presentation annotated. I have this presentation on SlideShare also annotated because I know you can't hear my lovely voice later on unless you watch a recording. Uh, the way I learned about long haul flight crews is from a book called Skyfaring by Mark Van Ocker who's a pilot for British Airways. A really interesting book, I learned a lot from it. Uh, I have information on the Atlas experiment at CERN and how they're collaborating together for 3,000 scientists. A video and interview with the Red Bull F1 pit crew. The video is really cool. They do it in slow-mo, then they do it regular speed, and it's amazing. And then just a book that I really take a lot of value from called Taking People With You by David Novak. It's a book about leadership, but ultimately it's a book about fostering success within a team and how you build your team up. And then I mentioned earlier uh, I have a non- uh, podcast on the non-technical side of being a developer. Episode seven, we talk about the four attributes of a great development team, which uh, this talk was fostered from. Now, I believe sessions is a team, our team's experience. We all have different roles. You have roles to listen, I have roles to hopefully teach and inspire. But there's also another role, is feedback. I can't do better, I can't be more successful as a speaker without your feedback, it's imperative. So either fill out the survey on the website or come talk to me, I'm here all week. Um, and give me feedback on this presentation, uh, feedback on what you think about Drupal or just working your own ideas and working with the team and what it takes. I greatly appreciate it. With that, I will say thank you for coming to my session, the last session. I know there's a lot of stiff competition on both sides of me. I really appreciate it. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, I will take questions after applause. And <laughs> thank you. Are there any questions? If you can come with the mic. If you don't want to come with the mic, I can repeat the question for you. So I manage a team of offshore developers as well. Right. Um, my biggest challenge is kind of working with that team and the internal team that we have. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to better kind of uh, implement some of those things? So is the issues, thank you for your question. Uh, are the issues that you're experiencing in between your on-site uh, team and your remote team, like working together? Uh, yeah, just kind of like holding, you know, everybody, re you know, it's like inspiring people, like how do you do that with an offshore team and an in-house team? Yeah, that can be difficult. Now, I only have limited experience in that scenario, um, so I can give some general advice of what I think from reading about teams. Um, are you doing like agile? That's yeah. Called? So, I mean, really on stand-ups, uh, what I find works well for remote teams, in my experience, is uh, making sure, like, if you use Hangouts, for example, that people have cameras on. Uh, okay. Especially for communication, it's a lot harder to goof off when you know anyone else could be watching you right at that moment. So that kind of forces people to pay more attention. 
Uh, and then I'm going to say also if you do demos or just uh, when you finish a sprint, just really calling out the success of individual, almost every individual person. Uh, especially if you can get a remote person and a local person to work together on one piece of functionality and show how that teamwork can work together. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. That was a great question. Okay, so my question is, um, I appreciate all of the suggestions. I use a lot of them and I've seen a lot of success, you know, with let's say three quarters of my team in that, right? Like you see that those things can make a difference. And then on the other side, it seems to have an equal and opposite effect of fostering resentment and eye rolls and people being just angry that you are working hard and trying to encourage them to do the same. So I'm at the point where I hear all this and I'm like, yeah, but what do you do if that backfires, right? Do you have experience with like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so I mean, the, the question as I understand it is no matter how hard you try, it seems like the more you push, the more people pull away, the more like they you know, push against it. Yeah. Um, that is a tough scenario, I would agree. Um, one of the things I could probably mention is, and this is not going to be easy, none of this will be easy, I'd say is try to have honest conversations with those people. Just be like, hey, you know, we keep trying to do, go these extra miles and try these extra things, and at every turn you seem to be pushing against us. Like, can you help me understand what the issue is? What are you worried about? What is blocking up? What do I need to do for you to help you be more successful? And I've done that too. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's lost cause at that point. Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna say a lost cause. I'll put it the most diplomatic way I can. And you will only have, I don't know your role, so it's, you'll only have so much control of this. It may come a point where you have to reevaluate and see is this person, do they, are, are they uh, a valuable part of this team? Are they causing so much impediment that to protect the team, we need to get rid of that person or you know, put them in a different position in a different place? That can be a hard thing to have. And that can also, I don't know if you've had that conversation with somebody. I work for government, so it's really okay. <laughs> so it's really Man. just like, try to figure out how to deal with it. I would like yeah. to thank you for bringing your bag of wrenches with yeah. you today. <laughs> um, I, uh, but this helps, right? This actually helps me realize, like, sometimes there's not a lot you can do. Right, so there's only, I mean, negative. the best you can do is <laughs> Try your hardest, demonstrate it, inspire as many people on your team, and if there are people who are not getting it, just find a way to, uh, uh, one thing that I've been told is, you know, you understand who's going to be a problem and you work around the problem. Yeah. Um, and in government, I'm sure that happens a lot, where there's that person who just comes in and they sit at their desk and you kind of work around them. Yeah. That, you may have to do that. I, I mean, it's unfortunate sometimes, but you can only do your, as much as you can to inspire others, and some people don't want to do it, so. But thank you for your question. All, all the twists and turns. It was like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> Any other questions? No? I can do a double applause if you want to. <laughs> all right, thank you, everyone. Again, I'm around all week. If you want to talk about anything Drupal or anything in general. About the Goonies, yeah. I made my wife watch it for the first time like two weeks ago for, for this talk. So. <laughs> I know. You of all people who actually complain about that. Uh, you just want to grab them.